Hello, Facebook Live. Um, thanks, Glenn, for the opportunity to speak to the Adapt Your Life crew of a topic of protein today. My name is Marty Kendall, and I run the Optimizing Nutrition Facebook group and blog. And um, by day, I'm an engineer, but I'm married to Monica, who happens to be a type 1 diabetic, hence my interest in nutrition and protein. I've also uh, got my own family of type 2 diabetes and uh, obesity to manage, hence my, hence my interest in understanding the importance of normalizing blood sugar and insulin le levels. A couple of years ago, I stumbled across the Food Insulin Index, which helps us to understand the impact of how not just carbohydrates, but also protein, fiber, and fructose affects our blood glucose levels. The Food Insulin Index help, helps us to better manage the insulin load of the food we eat to achieve a normal, healthy blood glucose and insulin levels. After playing with the Food Insulin Index for a bit, I realized that the least insulinogenic foods are processed fats and oils that typically um, don't provide a lot of vitamins, minerals, or amino acids. So I developed a way to also quantify nutrient density to uh, optimize the amount of nutrients that are harder to get hold of. Combining the food insulin index with nutrient density along with energy density allows us to personalize our nutritional choices for specific people and their goals, whether they be therapeutic ketosis, diabetes management, bodybuilding, athletics, or weight loss. More, like, more recently, I've been developing the Nutrient Optimizer system, which um, allows us to analyze a person's food log to help them normalize their blood sugar and insulin levels to find real foods that provide the nutrients they're not getting enough of. I thought I'd take this opportunity to share some of the observations from this analysis around the topic of protein and where I see some room for improvement. I found that there's more to nutrition than micronutrient, macronutrients. Micronutrients are also important and we can focus on balancing those too. I recently wrote a blog post entitled Macronu Micronutrients at Macronutrient Extremes. One of the key observations here is that if we try to minimize protein, we end up being quite low in not just the essential amino acids, but also many other key vitamins and minerals. At the other extreme, if we prioritize protein, we end up getting a wide range of other vitamins, minerals, and essential fatty acids. We end up with the best nutritional profile when we focus on the foods that have more of the harder to find nutrients. However, the second most nutrient dense approach is the one that prioritizes protein. The approach to the lowest nutrient density actually ends up being the one that aims to minimize protein. You may have heard of the protein leverage hypothesis, which suggests that people become satiated when they get enough protein, and otherwise they will continue to search for more food. Well, maybe not as strong, I'm a big believer in the idea that our satiety is highly influenced by all of the micronutrients. When we get enough, we feel satiated and our appetite switches off. When we're not getting enough of a handful of nutrients, we're more likely to keep on seeking out more food until we find it. When we were hunter and hunters and gatherers, we didn't have to worry about nutrient density. Everything we need, we had in our environment was full of the nutrients we needed and we could trust our appetite to find the right nutrients. These days, our world is full of hyperpalatable processed foods that are full of artificial flavors and sweeteners that trick our senses. We just about need trainer wheels to help us find the right foods with the right nutrients that will help us until our palate is cleansed and we can trust our appetite again. The long and short of the protein story, my view is that um, most people get enough if they listen to their appetite. If you're an active bodybuilder, you'll naturally crave more. If you're sedentary, then you probably won't crave as much protein. It's hard to put an exact number on it. A lot of people spend a lot of time debating the exact number, but um, we seem to burn about 0.4 kilograms per pound of per um, kilogram of uh, gra 0.4 grams of lean. Uh, 0.4 grams per kilogram of lean body mass during starvation. The RDI is about 0.8 grams per kilogram of lean body mass. Most people get about that. Um, typically intake is typically 1.2 grams per kilogram of lean body mass or 16% of calories. Keto guru Steve Finney recommends 1.5 to 2 kil uh, grams per kilogram of reference weight and what we find is the upper limit of muscle protein synthesis is about 1.8 
grams per kilogram of lean body mass. Most people struggle to eat a lot more of that from whole food sources. So, At the same time, yes, I think it is possible to get too much protein. I did the um, nutrient analysis on Andy Mant recently, who was um, trying to load up with a lot of extra protein to get maximize his gains from his lifting. Um, found he was eating about 3.7 kilograms per kilogram of lean body mass, which left very little room for anything else, and hence he was actually lacking in micronutrients. After a couple of rounds with the nutrient optimizer, uh, we were able to focus him on more nutrient-dense protein sources, as well as some good sources that provided the other micronutrients he was missing. Now he's feeling much more satiated, um, feeling and performing great and sleeping better. Um, at, the uh, at the other end of the spectrum, I've seen a number of people who have heard that keto, keto will make them lean and end up getting a lot of their calories from butter, cream, cheese, MCT oil, and keto products and end up with a very poor nutrient profile. I think these people really need to focus on whole foods and back up on, on the dietary fats. They can use some of their own body fat, particularly if they're not actually insulin resistant. Um, I see a, 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 a question from Vince about the protein sparing modified fast. Um, the protein sparing modified fast has been shown to be the most effective way to lose weight and documented in the Rapid Fat Loss Handbook by Lyle MacDonald. But it's basically a calorie restricted diet with enough protein to prevent muscle loss. Lewis Velocinor from Keto Gains uses the protein sparing modified fast a lot to keep lean and to keep his muscles growing while he's losing body fat. Lyle MacDonald doesn't recommend a protein sparing modified fast for an extended period due to the fact that it doesn't contain a lot of micronutrients, but I think you'll have a better chance of success if you're using a protein sparing modified fast with as much non-starchy veggies and lean protein as you can physically fit in. The fat loss approach on the Optimizing Nutrition blog is based around this approach. Ben McDonald asked an interesting question about the different response to protein for someone who's insulin resistant versus someone who might be insulin sensitive. It seems that someone who is insulin sensitive will actually see the blood sugar decrease in response to a large protein meal. You might want to test this to understand if uh, you personally are insulin sensitive or insulin resistant. Someone who's uh, really insulin resistant might, or, or someone with type 1 diabetes might see their blood sugar increase for a period after they eat a large protein meal. Seems what's happening is the insulin goes to work on the protein that, and, and uses it to rebuild our muscle, uh, and that insulin also works to decrease the blood sugar. In someone who doesn't have enough insulin to suppress the glucose, we see blood sugar actually increase after a high protein meal. It seems there isn't enough insulin to metabolize the protein as well as keep the glycogen in storage in the liver so the blood glucose ends up increasing. I think the real question here though is, should people eat more protein and exercise to build lean muscle mass, which will help you improve insulin sensitivity, or should they try to eat less protein to avoid the blood sugar rise? Personally, I probably err on the side of eating whole food proteins, which help them build muscle and improve their insulin sensitivity. It's the people who are insulin sensitive that can probably actually get away with less protein because their bodies are primed to build new muscle with it when they do eat. I think the same is true after fasting. If we feast on nutrient-dense protein after we fast, our bodies are primed to build new muscles and organs after a cleanse of autophagy. I see a lot of people out there um, online using a high-fat therapeutic ketogenic dietary approach after a refeed to fast when the goal is fat loss, which I don't think is probably going to be optimal. It's not, a, it's not good to be in a constant growth mode, with chronically, which chronically stimulates mTOR and drives high insulin levels. That's where I think it's good to have a balance between periods when our body is feeding and building and using insulin in a good way to build our muscles and uh, replenish our organs, and at the same time, there are periods where we go without food, we cleanse, we go through autophagy and restore insulin sensitivity. Then we're primed to build fresh new muscle cells and organs when we do eat. 
but if you don't maximize nutrient density when you do refeed, I think there's a, a great chance of binging as our body seeks out the nutrients it needs. In the end, I don't think most people, unless you require a therapeutic ketogenic diet, need to be worried too much about protein as long as it's coming from whole food sources. The kids I've seen thriving with type 1 diabetes are eating plenty of protein in line with the appetite and the guidance of Dr. Bernstein. If you're not growing or working out, you won't probably crave a ton of protein. You should listen to your appetite and make sure you've got a whole, uh, got good whole, full, whole food sources on hand. Um, thanks very much, Glenn, for the opportunity. Um, can't see any new questions there, but um, really appreciate the opportunity to talk to the Adapt Live crew. And um, I'll see you later. Thank you very much. Cheers.